up you guys some here team symmetry here to bring you guys a quick video um, the reason why I'm doing this video is that uh, the other channel mega capital G um, was actually the inspiration for this video uh, he did a similar video to it and I got actually a lot of requests in my inbox both here on YouTube and on Facebook and some video comments to do this and it's reviewing what I feel as a player the top five decks of the current format are uh, mega capital G did this on his channel a couple days ago he also talked about decks he didn't include I'm gonna do the same thing uh, my list is a little different from his um, this is just based on what I've seen out here in Northern California and what I feel the top five decks are so I'm just gonna go through them um, I guess like in reversal order so at number five uh, so I don't have like any of the actual main board stuff but this is going to substitute for for gear gears I think the number f uh, number five deck is gear gear I don't think gear gear is one of the top like three decks because as good as the deck is don't get me wrong the deck is really good gear gear armor gear gear accelerator are great cards um, gear gear X is an amazing card and either running the mocking engine or the car curry engine is really good but I feel that the monsters are so small that they can get hit by a lot of things and that as good as they are other decks can just overpower them turn one they have a strong opening play by going gear gear armor but they require a lot of back row or hand traps or whatever to stop their opponent from getting their combos off uh, players these days know when they're playing against gear gear because they'll see the uh, I believe it's the arsenal or accelerator whichever one is the lone fire blossom that sets the gear gear armor they then know like if they're playing dark world they're gonna graph the armor so that the opponent doesn't get the the flip effect also effect veiler pretty much wrecks the deck so I feel that this is the number five uh, probably most played deck out here. I really do like the deck though. I think the deck has a lot of potential. Uh, I know a lot about the Machina version. I'm still looking into the Car Curry version and there's also a mixture of Car Curry, Machina, and Gear Gear all in one. So I think it's just a really good um, you know, solid deck overall and it just it'll take time to be probably number one but uh, I think over time it could happen if the deck continues to be as successful as it is. So that would I say is um, probably the fifth best deck. Um, coming in at number four, um, my personal favorite deck is Dark World, and I feel Dark World is is in there in the top five. Um, it's not as high as other decks because Dark World, as powerful as it is, as gr as great as Graph is, and as great as it is, being able to tear apart your opponent's hand. Dark World suffer from a very important thing. They draw really bad. They draw really inconsistently, and it really does suck. And that is the only reason why I would say Dark World are not as high up as they should be. You can open hands of all spells, and it can suck. You can open all monsters with no discard outlet, and you really have no play. You have to set a monster and hope to draw gates, or hope to draw something in order to get Grapha. And current builds are still being worked on and tweaked to see what build works for Dark World. I feel a lot of people run Dark World because it's a budget deck. It's a very budget deck. All the cards in it are pretty cheap. So I feel that Dark World will remain one of the top five for the fact that it's budget, it's effective, and it works. They're just the right build and the right player has to wield the deck in order to be successful. Um, so that's what I have at um, number four. And number three, unfortunately, I don't have anything to represent it, but number three for me is Agents. Agents have come back um, big time this format, and I feel they're probably one of the best decks uh, right now. Um, the ability, they open Venus and the Shine Balls and the Gachi Gachi so easily, and it's just an amazing opening play. A 2000 beater, um, you've got a defender in Gachi Gachi, and you always are, the opponent is always afraid of Honest, and these days, Honest isn't even your worst enemy. Your worst enemy is Herald of Orange Light. I was playing yesterday um, at my locals, and I got, I got Gemini Imped, followed by Double Herald. I still won the match, but I literally just sat there in utter shock because I could not believe that both my Grapha Pops got stopped by a stupid little orange fairy, and I was like, wow, you know, kudos to you for having them, but it was like, fuck, that was just insane. So I think agents are just amazing. The ability to drop Hyperion and Christia and just win is phenomenal, and I think agents are definitely one of the top decks right now. They're my number three. Uh, top deck of the format because I feel that there are, there are two other decks that are still superior to them uh, for the fact of how they play and the monsters they can draw. Uh, coming in at number two is Chaos Dragons. The reason why I'm saying Chaos Dragons is because that deck, you may have taken away Future Fusion, you may have taken away Red MD, doesn't matter. They still have Pulsars, they still have Dark Flares, they still have the one Red MD that they know how to use properly. They still have Tragodia, they still have Gores, they still have BLS, Chaos Sorcerer, Dark Arm Dragon, Eclipse Dra uh, Wyvern, they still have all these cards, they still have the ability to drop a shit ton of damage in one turn, they can OTK you by dropping their whole hand, they can pretty much knock out any monster you throw at them, they can banish problem monsters like Zen Mains, they can get past anything, Ryla, uh, Lila and Raiko are the heart of the deck, they pop the back row, they pop annoying monsters, and they just mill what the opponent, what you need, Card Trooper does the same thing, and they run Effect Veilers, 
is they run max C's, they run whatever they can in order to just shut down all your plays and then just beat over all your monsters. And I feel like that's just an amazing, it's an amazing deck right now. I think that, um, it might be the best deck of the format. The only reason I'm not putting it at number one is because we already know what the number one deck of the format is, just based on statistics and based on uh, how the format has been playing out. But I still feel that Chaos Dragons are definitely, definitely, definitely one of the best decks of the format, and a deck that I personally would run myself for the format if I didn't love Dark World so much. So I feel that... Um, Chaos Dragons really just, they don't have like a terrible matchup. Like Dark World is possibly their hardest matchup along with Insector, but they trash Rabbit, they trash Gear, yeah, they trash all these decks if the opponent just doesn't have all the back row protection. Because eventually you run out of protection and they're going to bait your protection with Lila and Raikou, and that's why I think the deck's just really good. So Chaos Dragons is definitely, um, I think, the second best deck of the format. And of course, coming in at number one, the ever elusive Magician Shark combo. Yes, wind up. Reason is wind up just have an amazing opener. The ability to go Magician Shark and pretty much guarantee game, turn one Shockmaster, set some back row call spells is is broken. Like honestly, like it's broken. And I mean, um, wind up can suffer from the fact that you may not draw the best hand. You could open like double Magician and like no other plays. You could open triple Rat, double Rat, and no other plays. And, you know, it kind of sucks, but the deck has so many plays, so many exceeds it can make, and so many ways of getting out of tough situations. A top deck rat is amazing. A top deck, um, like, you can have shark in hand, you can top the magician, and vice versa. Uh, the, the ability to evade attacks and just overwhelm the opponent with wind-up rabbit makes it easily the best deck of the format. And clearly it shows in all the decks that have been showing up. Uh, in the current format. Um, I feel that these are probably the top five decks out here in Northern California, and this is just my area. I don't know how the different areas go, but um, those are my definitely my top five. Number one, Wind Up. Number two, Chaos Dragons. Number three, uh, Agents. Number four, Dark World. And number five is uh, definitely... And number five is definitely um, Gear Gia. So I feel that those decks are definitely the best uh, of the format. Now, the decks I didn't mention, um, I didn't mention Heroes, I didn't mention Six Samurais, I didn't mention Insectors, and I didn't mention... Um, I think that might have been it. The reason why not no to Hero is that Heroes, as good as they are, are getting shut down by Shockmaster left and right. They're losing to Dark World because Dark World is taking away all their Miracle Fusions, all their Gemini Sparks, all their Answers. Um, they're still an amazing deck in my opinion, but I feel that another build needs to be uh, made in order to, um, keep up, I guess, with this current format. That's why Heroes did not make my list. Uh, Samurais, um, I love Samurais. I would say Samurais are probably the sixth best deck. And the reason is that I feel Samurais, the ability to make Shin is great, but Chaos Dragons just run that shit over. They just run over that deck because they don't care about using all their spells immediately. They can set a Raikou and pop Shin or pop whatever, and then they're in a winning position, and I feel that that's what makes them a really good deck. And um, the last one I didn't, the last one I didn't mention was, um, let's see, I said no to Samurais, no to Heroes, and another one I didn't mention was Insectors. Now, uh, Mega Capital G included... Insectors included um, Samurais and the reason why I didn't include Insectors either, either is that Billy Break has been the only one to bring them to a top finish right now and that means that the deck still has its flaws and it's still really slow compared to the way it used to be. I do understand that Centipede is still the best card in the deck but I feel that until uh, other people come up with new strategies with it it's going to be kind of... Um, I don't want to use the word obsolete, but I feel that it's not going to be as good as it could have been. And granted, they may have a great game one, but game two and three, along with Dark World, is always a uphill battle because you can go Macrocosmos and just wreck their field. You can go Effect Veiler and wreck their plays. You can go Fiendish Chain and wreck their plays, and I feel that that's the same, you know, the same thing. Um, I didn't add Dino Rabbit either. As much as I love Dino Rabbit, I feel Dino Rabbit has gotten a lot slower and until new ways are found to make it good, until the new uh, Evil Sworn or whatever it's called, um, Vers in the OCG becomes fully legal here, I feel that Dino Rabbit are kind of be taking a back seat because they're still good, but they just are not as effective. Um, turn 1 Lagia is still good, but usually you want to combat it with um, multiple background. If you don't have that, it's really hard to keep Lagia alive because people will just bait it left and right. Um, so I feel those are the best decks of the format and the decks that I mentioned are the ones that I feel are not the best of the format but are definitely decks that you could run in an event and do well with but uh, that's just my opinion as a player and that's what I have seen personally this is just my personal opinion based on to my locals I've been at and based at the regionals I've been at and I don't know will there be a new deck that's going to pass them all up are Mermails, um, Atlanteans going to be the new 
hot deck of the format are they going to trash everything i don't know but i feel that in time we'll definitely know and i feel that for the time being these are what these are the decks you need to look out for these are the decks you need to prepare for and these are the decks you need to side for and know how to play against because if you're prepared for one but not for the other that surprise deck is what's really going to take you out of the running so um let me know what you guys think you know comment below do you agree with me do you disagree with me do you think some of the decks i said um that weren't mentioned should be in the top five do you feel that some that were mentioned in the top five should be on the lower end just let me know what you guys think i'd love to hear you guys' feedback. It means a lot to me. It helps me make my videos better. It helps me uh, to do more research on the current format. And if you know anything about Atlanteans or Mirror Males, whatever they're called, do you think they will take over the format? Do you think they will be what is going to be the new hot deck of the format? But anyways, thumbs up the video. Let me know what you guys think. Once again, shout out to Mega Capital G for making the first video about this. Mine was a little different. Uh, same synopsis with the top five decks. Just we both have different opinions based on the current meta that we both see as different players. So that's all I got to say, guys. You know, thumbs up the video. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, uh, comment below um, with your thoughts and we will just continue churning out videos for the rest of the week. So that's all I got to say you guys. Thank you for watching.